going to look at 4151 in the 13th edition. 4151 in the 13th edition. This is the problem here. We have a beam. Uh, it's got these uh, this length. Okay, and it's got this distribution here. As you can see, the distribution is made up of two triangles. Uh, the maximum value at this point is 6 kilonewton per meter of that distributed loading. We can see we have a clockwise couple moment of 500 kilonewton meter. And we've got a single point load here of 15 kilonewton. So I like this problem because it's it's got a lot of ingredients in this in this pot. Okay, it's got a distributed load. It's got a single point load. Remember the difference, okay? And it's got a couple moment here. And what they want us to do is to replace this entire system with an equivalent system of a single force acting at a certain point from, from O. All right? So that's the basic idea. And by now you should know that what we're trying to do to simplify the system is we... We calculate the area under the curve. The area under the curve gives us our resultant force, remember? Step one, our resultant, if we want to replace this by a single force acting at a certain point, then we need to calculate the area under the curve, right? If it's a simple uh, shape like this, a simple geometry, then it's straightforward. We know that it's a triangle. The area is half base times height. But if it's a, it's an interesting shape, then we need to use integration as we have shown in the previous example. Okay? Um, so that's the first thing. Fr, the resultant force of, of a given um, geometry, a, a given area, is the area under the curve. Simple. And the second thing is we need to determine where where that position will be, and what we what we know is that the position of that FR for that given area will always act through the centroid. Always act through the centroid. The center of area. That is the center of area. Okay? Okay. So that hopefully that is very clear by now. Okay. So what do, we, what do we see here? We've got a few ingredients. Like I said, we've got this distributed load. We've got a couple moment and we've got a single point force. And what we want to do is we want to simplify this whole system to one single force acting at a point from a distance from point O here. Point O is a point right at the end of this beam. Okay. So here we've got this. Let's first look at this distributed area. As you can see, we can split this area into two triangles. The first is like that. That value there is 6 kilonewton per meter. And this length is 7.5 meters. So what is the area? Simply half base times height, which is half 7.5 times 6. Okay. Now I just need to find my calculator. 0.5 times 7.5 times 6. And guys, if, if I make a mistake, please forgive me. Um, it is obviously extremely crucial to get the right answer. But, but if I make a mistake here and there, don't freak out. Just look at the method, go over it, and then try to compare your answers with what you see in the back. Okay, So this equals 22,5 kilonewton. Remember? That's your that's your that's your force. That's the force due to this distributed load. Okay. Then the second thing we want to know is where does it act? Well, it acts through the centroid. And where what's your gut feeling regarding where the centroid should be? It should be towards this side, right? Because the same amount of area should be on both sides of this um, of this line. Okay. Now. When it comes to triangles, um, maybe let me just pause the video quickly and I can show you from another textbook. Okay, so here I've gone to the back of a textbook called um, Statics as well, but it's by other authors, Miriam and Craig. Okay, Engineering Mechanics, Miriam and Craig. I really like this as a supplementary textbook. Um, 
And at the back here, it, it gives me a bit better of an idea of, of how to determine the centroid of, an, of a triangle. Okay? So what you notice, here's a triangle. Here you've got this base length, B, and you've got this, I don't know what you want to call it, uh, length from that point to the, the apex. Is that what you call it? The, the top, the apex? So you've got this length A, you've got this length B. And the centroid is equal to A plus B over 3. So measure from the one side to the, to the, the apex. That's A. Then you measure from that same side to the, to the, the whole base, and that's B, and you divide by 3. Okay? Uh, I find this to be a bit a better description than the one that's given by, by the textbook we're using. So, right, so what, what does it look like? I'm just going to do it again. Uh, it gives you, this is B. No, what was it? That was A. That length there is A. That length there is B. And the centroid is, rather it's the the x uh, coordinate of the centroid is a plus b over 3. So when we look here, what is a? a is going to be, sorry, a is going to be this length here, which is 7.5. Okay. And b is going to be 7.5 as well. Sorry. Let me just make sure we got the camera going properly here. 7.5, okay, divided by 3. And that should equal 7.5 times 2 divided by 3 is 5. All right? So what do you notice about this is that this this 5 this 5 is 2 thirds of 7.5 okay it's 2 thirds of 7.5 so so whenever we have a triangle okay like this you can see 2 thirds of 7.5 2 divided by 3 times 7.5 equals 5 so it's always going to be towards this, this heavier side, right? So just think again. Basically, it, it, your centroid should have the same amount of area on both sides of this line, right? So the answer here is 5 meters. It's 2 thirds from that side. It's 1 third from that side, okay? 2 thirds from that side, 1 third from that side. Okay, so this, this first one, this first one, we've got our force. Our force is equal to 22,5 kilonewton, and this length acting through the centroid is 5 meters. Okay? Then the next, next uh, problem is this distributed load on the side. On the other side, that's 6 kilonewton per meter. Okay, so what is the area? It's going to be half base times height, half. Now, what is the base? That is 4.5 meters, 4.5 times the height of 6. The answer there is 0.5 times 4.5 times 6, and that is 13,5 kilonewton. So that's your FR2, okay? That's your FR2. This is your FR1, let's call it, okay? And then it needs to, what about x bar 2? We can call this one x bar 1. x bar 2 is through the centroid. It's either 2 thirds from that side or it's 1 third from that side. Right? It's going to act through there, right? There's going to be your centroid. There. Okay? So 1 third from this side means that it's 1.5 meters at the beginning of this triangle, but... We need to add on the 7.5. So 7 point, remember we're measuring from point O. So 7.5 plus 1.5 gives us 9. Okay. So we've got 9 meters. Now we've got everything we need. We can replace this beam. We've got this couple there. Okay, that's 500. 
kilonewton meter. Okay, you guys happy with that? We have a force here of 22,5 kilonewton, and that's at 5 meters. We have another force here of 13.5 kilonewton, and that total distance is 9. And we've got this another point force here, point load here of 15 kilonewton. Okay, now that is essentially the first step because we've now reduced our whole system to a system of point loads and a couple moment. All right, but we're still not done. We want to get the position of the equivalent force. We need we still need an equivalent force, and we want a position. Okay. So let's just redraw that. 500 kilonewton meter. We've got the 22,5. We've got the 13,5, and we've got 15. Okay. Now, where relative to this point over there will we find an equivalent force? Remember the way we we do this the same as, as chapter 4.8. Need to go check that out. We equate moments. Okay? So take anticlockwise as positive, the resultant moment about point O equals the sum of all the moments of the forces. So how do, what do we need here? For this, we need our total resultant. Okay? Force. What is our total resultant force? Let's just calculate it here. It equals 22,5. Okay. I'm just going to... Uh, let's just do minus. Uh, look, I'm just going to add it up like this, okay? Because they're, they're all going in the same direction. 22,5 plus 13,5 plus 15 equals... 22,5 plus 13,5 plus 15 equals 51 kilonewton, and it's acting down, right? They're all acting down. Now... So what we know is this is now our, our original system and we now want a single system with a force acting. That force is 51 kilonewton acting down and now we want to determine the distance um, that that force acts from that, from that point. And how do we do it? The moments. The moment due to this resultant force should equal the moment due to all the original forces plus existing couple moments, okay? So what have we got here? We've got 51, that's the force, times this distance, right? That's the moment, and that should be minus, right? So that is this 51 times that x on the left-hand side equals now the sum of all the moments, okay? We've got 22,5, should be minus, what was that distance? Remember we said it was 5, uh, minus 13,5. And remember that minus is not because it's a negative force. That minus is because it is going in a clockwise direction. Okay, And that was 9, minus 15, the moment due to that 15, times 12. Then we need to still include this couple moment, which is minus 500. Okay? Okay, so when you do that calculation, you'll see the answer ends up being something like 17,9 meters. Okay, now what's interesting is this, uh, I'm, uh, you know, when I considered how to explain it, I just don't know if I can. The, uh, the, the total length of this beam is 12 meters. It's uh, 7.5 plus 4.5. But the X bar is 17,9. So this 51, in order to have an equivalent system, this 51 actually acts somewhere over there. Okay? This length is 17,9. Okay, well, you can think about it, um, debate it, uh, come up with some philosoph philosophical theories about this. But nevertheless, the answer is 51 kilonewton, and it's acting 17,9 meters from point O. And it, it effectively should have the same external effect as this system here and as this system here. Okay? All right. So I hope this has cleared up a few things. Yeah. Uh, send me an email or leave some comments in the, in the comment section if you have any questions. Cheers.